In this video, me and Contango depart the last town in Queensland, the northernmost town in Queensland on the east coast, as we make our push up the Great Barrier Reef over the top of Australia. Subscribe to Slow Boat Sailing, where we give you the stories of the most interesting sailors in the world and our round the world adventure. The rough seas lead to us needing to get repairs at Cape Flattery before continuing. Cooktown is famous as a place where Captain Cook and the Endeavor put in for repairs on their survey mission of Australia. That historic landfall is commemorated with a museum. All right, so I'm in uh, Cooktown right now. Um, you know, uh, it there's just this one marina. It has dock space for three boats I think that was the third boat I think all our boats here came from the, the Hope is uh, Hope Island East Hope Island I recognize them all and uh, I'm kind of like uh, not inclined to stay here for the whole blow and I'll just see what happens I think I'm probably gonna be uh, getting a, a fistful of pain but I don't I don't really know how to avoid it given my time constraints so uh, we'll see if it's possible for me to you know anchor and, and stuff uh, in these conditions uh, I'm not worried about dragging so much as I'm worried about picking up the anchor uh, in the conditions because that just doesn't give you very much time you have to use the engine to move forward and then run forward and so if you've got if it's just you, it's just me, right? Then it, it's a little more difficult. So, but I, you know, Wendy, my update on Wendy today said it's, it's going for several days. But the good thing is, you know, you get to refresh the laundry here. You get to refresh the water, uh, refresh the uh, provisions and uh, make sure you're topped up on fuel. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll do maybe a, a couple boat projects too while I'm here and I, I have some some work that I'd like to get done before I kind of lose the internet because I think this is the end of the internet for us uh, Cooktown and then it's almost 400 miles uh, to Horn Island uh, and Thursday Island which are right next to each other uh, and then I think we'll get a cellular signal back but I don't think we're going to have another one uh, for a long time and we're also going to have kind of really you know 25 knot winds um and maybe more and it's in the right direction it's just you know when you wherever you anchor uh that's going to be really difficult uh but we're having a beautiful sunset here this is the endeavor river this is where captain cook repaired his boat after he uh uh ran it up onto the endeavor reef which is also named after his boat uh this river is named after his boat <laughs> Uh, so I went to the museum today. It was small. <laughs> it was okay. It was interesting. Uh, but yeah, it was like a few days in 1770, right? Uh, when he was here, uh, he ran up on the reef. He was able to float off the reef and then they went into the Endeavor River to make repairs. All right, subscribe. After a very peaceful night at the marina, that harbor is, is really shallow. You've got to be very careful. There's only those three spots in the marina. My exit uh, from Cooktown was very eventful, very rough. Glad to get out of there. Uh, would not want to do it again, though. All right, so we're approaching Cape Flattery. Uh, it was just a nightmare coming out of uh, Cooktown today. Uh, you know, almost hit a buoy uh, in the channel there because we were getting blown uh, to the, uh, we were getting blown to the green side of the channel, so the port side of the channel. Uh, but we didn't hit it, thankfully. Uh, I guess it was my great steering at the very end. But, oh man, it was choppy. So, I mean, Windy did not send, it, you know, you expect like one foot waves. No, the waves are up to seven feet, but they, you know, when we were doing the beam breach, they were like four to five feet, uh, and we were just getting 
pummeled uh, on a beam reach. Uh, so, thankfully, uh, Cape Bedford and Cape Flattery are about as far east as you can get uh, when you're this far north. And so I decided not to go to Cape Bedford because then I'd have to put more east in my track tomorrow uh, and would just do the run to Cape Flattery, which we have plenty of time to do since we're making like seven knots easily. It's really hard to go slower, to be honest. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss how I would go slower. But the uh, we just need to get around the Cape. Cape Flattery here is the easternmost point this far north of the York Peninsula. And then after the great thing about the York Peninsula is it keeps on falling off, it keeps on going west, and so the easterlies, you never have to go east after this point. So you can keep on heading west or north, uh, and that's what we're going to do. And we're getting, you know, mostly these, the winds are about south southeast, 25 knots. Uh, and we expect that for days upon days. Uh, I'm inclined not to try to try the island anchorages. Definitely will not try to visit Lizard Island, uh, which is uh, to the east of us. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think I might just try to do Cape uh, Melville. I might leave in the darkness to go for Cape Melville in one day uh, because, oh my goodness, I do not want to be in a rolly anchorage in a small island with, uh, we'll see how rolly it is tonight. I think it's going to be very uncomfortable tonight and this is the best anchorage on this coast. So until you get to Cape Melville. So when we get to Cape Melville, uh, then I think we'll have a good anchorage and I'd feel more comfortable uh, anchoring uh, there. All right, so I'm at Cape Flattery. Uh, it is way better than I expected. Very awesome. I like Cape Flattery as an anchorage. Uh, it seems like the charts uh, are really off. Um, I don't see any color gradation in the water. We're anch we, were, we dropped the anchor kind of right at where they said it was like brown, like it dries there. But it was 15 foot depths, 14 foot depths. Uh, I think it's, uh, I think it's probably deep almost all the way to the, the shoreline here behind me. I'm pretty close to the point. There's a, there's, uh, there's a motor vessel anchored uh, further to the west, and, and there's a, a sailboat anchored out. Uh, further out to the west but I think this is good I don't I'm not getting any swell whatsoever most of the wind was from the south you know I was going pretty much due north and so overall Cape uh, um, this Cape Flattery is, is just uh, better than I could have expected given the conditions today and what a total um, terribleness it was uh, the only downside was uh, as I was coming into Cape Flattery and I was starting to beam reach, right? So I could so I could come in because I didn't want to like I didn't want to miss the point by too much. I didn't want to run too much and then turn into the wind I wanted to beam reach in uh, because I just didn't want to pound for a long time. Uh, and as I was doing that and and bringing in. Uh, uh, furling jib, the Genoa, uh, the shackle for the topping lift, which from an uh, external halyard that I was using, came loose, right? So, so that, so I kind of lost the halyard essentially, right? And, but you know, my boat's not that tall. And I have a really, really long boat hook. I have like a 20 foot boat hook if I extend it fully. Uh, and so, and I think my mast is only like 40 feet off the deck. So I can get halfway up the mast plus my my height just with that boat hook. So, but it was chasing that for like three hours. But as I was doing that, I, uh, 
I kind of reached up and, and I accidentally hit the uh, that thing, uh, the, the wind generator. So the wind generator has not worked all season, right? Ever since I came back from New Caledonia, first I saw it, it I've had no evidence that it, it actually works. Its brake doesn't work. Uh, it's not putting out electricity. I also lost the nose cone on it my first sail. So I really should have taken it down, uh, but I broke one of the, accidentally, with the boat hook, I, I broke uh, one of the, the wings on it. And when one of the wings is, is broken, it really just shakes, rattles, and crinkles like craziness. There's nothing wrong with its frame. Its frame is just as solid as it is. Its, its frame is actually welded. It's pretty good, actually, but it shakes like crazy uh, with, uh, if I did lasso it, it's lasso right now. And I really should have lassoed it. I, I regret not doing that earlier, and I think it's kind of a blessing in disguise that I broke it with the boat hook because that thing just really makes me nervous in high winds. To, you know, without the brake working, that thing turning, it just makes so much noise, drives me nuts. You know, these 25, 20 to 30 knot winds, right? The, oh, it is so much better right now that I'm not hearing the generator, the wind generator. So I don't think I ever want to go back. The problem with the wind generator is it, you know, it, it's the same problem with the solar panels. It just doesn't, even if it works perfectly, it does not make that much energy. And for the hassle that it is, so supposedly these renewables are no problem. There's no hassle, but they are a lot of hassle. Uh, but you know, the, the disutility of the wind generator, of course, is that, it's so noisy. I mean, it's noisier than the Honda generator. It's noisier than the engine. Uh, and if you're it's sailing in really good winds, that just kind of puts your uh, your heartbeat on it. So, I'm, uh, so my plan for tomorrow is that uh, so Cape Flattery is a good anchorage. There's not many good anchorages within a day sail of Cape Flattery. Um, as I said, uh, Lizard Island has moorings. Those moorings, if we could get one, would be good. But, and they would be okay for our boat because we have a relatively small boat. But it's to the east and it's not really getting me in the direction that I need to go. It's not, it's like a side trip essentially. Um, and I just don't want to go east whatsoever if I can avoid it. So that's out. That's, that's the best anchorage, but those balls will probably be full anyways with catamarans, right? They'll, they don't care what the rating is on those balls. Um, and so the best uh, that I think we can hope for is to is to run for Cape Melville, which does have a good anchorage, which does have good protection from the south and the east, right? That's where the trains are coming from. As opposed to these relatively small islands where the swell can just go around them, and if the swell goes around them, it's just, it's just miserable in these conditions. So uh, that's my plan, but I don't think I'm going to go tomorrow. I think I'm going to go the next day. So I'm going to take down the wind generator. Uh, so that's not going to be a problem uh, anymore. So I'm not just going to lasso it like that. I think I just take it down. Uh, I might take its whole pole down or just take the wind generator itself down. I don't care. I don't think I would like to replace the wind generator, to be honest. Now that I've uh, experienced life without it going, I don't want to go back. Uh, and... But the idea is that I want to have a nighttime departure from Cape Flattery and then a ro a drop the hook during the daytime while there's still daylight in Cape Melville, which is about 70 miles to get to Cape Melville. So it's an awkward distance. Uh, 
I think in these winds, the way that Contango was going about seven knots, but you know, I don't think it's good to rely on that. Uh, and I follow the adage that you want to be in an unfamiliar, you do not want to enter an unfamiliar harbor or anchorage at night. And that, that's the way I feel about uh, King Melville. So I think this is a pretty wide open place and I, I you know, I have a day to look at the, the hazards around here and get the lay of the land and then I think maybe I'll have like a 2 a.m. departure where I pick up the anchor and then run for Cape Melville. And you know, the good thing is that the, the winds are, are mostly south, uh, maybe east, and the after Cape Melville, uh, the uh, Cape Melville is going to have give us some protection, uh, but after Cape Melville, it's still is going up to a point where it's falling away to the west and the north, and those the those trade those enhanced trade winds um, will get you over the top. Um, now I don't know what the acreages are after Cape Melville, but I I think the best way to do it is to do the over the night departure. But I'll do tomorrow as a rest day, as long as this anchorage holds. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Subscribe. This is my uh, second night at uh, uh, Flattery Harbor. Uh, so there, there's actually are some boats here. There's a, uh, there's a uh, monohull sailboat that is anchored. Uh, there was a fishing boat that anchored to that today, and there's also, I think, a pilot boat that is associated with the sand mine here. Um, I thought we might get some 3G, but I've not got any signal. Maybe they're anchored closer to the 3G. I'm, I think I'm anchored in the better spot in terms of the roll. Um, the winds are mostly south. They're south-southeast, so I think this gives me kind of the best protection uh, but I, I stayed here today because um, you know last night we had the problem with the, the um, halyard and I was pulling down the halyard and then I broke the, the uh, blade on the, the wind generator which was not working anyways but it was still spinning but once it, the blade was broken then it was it was uh, shaking quite a bit so it was useless before it was dangerous afterwards so I was able to get it down and take it off the pole and we're gonna stow it until uh, we can find a trash can to put it into which is probably in Horn Island uh, and then so that was a success uh, but you know that you know takes time uh, I think the other thing the issue we had was that the uh, the roller furling for some reason it, it it was not furling completely so I had to uh, you know uh, unscrew the the roller furling line and then wrap it some more so that now I can fully close the Genoa I don't you know I don't know if that's because of how tight I had the rolls or what, or there, there was maybe, a, a, it's hard to say why that that started happening, but um, but that's an easy, that was an easy fix. The other issue we had was the engine was not charging and that was because the alternator belt was too loose. So I tried a different kind of uh, bolt combination with that. And I think this bolt combination will be better and hopefully it'll stay tight. And I also tightened the, the water pump belt with the salt water pump belt. But, uh, you know, I, I think that's fine. Uh, I mean, I, it's probably a good idea and I probably should have done it. I should have changed the water pump belt instead of tightening it. Uh, but once you've done the alternator, so the next time I have to do something with the alternator belt, I'll change the water pump belt. But it, they both looked in really good condition. That's why I didn't change them. Um, my thought was to, to go to Cape Melville. Um, what I'm going to, I might get up early to do that. 
like 2 a.m., 1 a.m., but I'm kind of more inclined to like get up at, you know, my normal 4 a.m., 5 a.m. and start pulling up the chain uh, once I'm dressed and, and and then just go to Howick Island and if I've got more time, then go to Cape Melville. Uh, but if I go to Howick, it seems like it's actually a pretty good anchorage in these southern winds, these south-southeast winds. Uh, it's not great if we have east winds, but I think we're going to continue to have these south-southeast winds. I think that's kind of the predominant winds on this this peninsula because it just kind of like goes up, the winds start going up the peninsula. And so uh, I think that's a good midpoint between Cape Melville. If I can do the, the you know, the, the 35 mile days, we're going to get to uh, Horn Island and, and Thursday Island, you know, in time to meet Janet and, and Sophie in, in uh, uh, if we do an offshore passage to uh, uh, to uh, Darwin. I think Darwin is, you know, I mean, I don't think I can really go offshore here because the, the, the reef is too thick. You have to go too much far, too far east to do that. Uh, I just don't think it's like the best option. So I do think the day sailing for this is the best option or maybe some overnights. And I may do the overnight, yes, tomorrow, but uh, I don't I think how it get as an anchorage it goes for what's left is, is actually maybe good good enough. So we'll see how hard it is for me to pull up the anchor this time. Uh, and, you know, uh, about how many overnights that I want to do. I think I should be able to get the 90 feet of chain up quicker than the two hours the last time, but I don't know. The wind is really strong, as you can hear, uh, and so I, you know we will we'll see how it goes. But I just find uh, this this is a really really weird part of the circumnavigation. I can't remember a coastal cruise that was more remote than this uh, in terms of like no civilization and. You know, coastal cruising Australia with no towns is pretty creepy. Um, and if it were easy to go offshore, I think I would consider doing an offshore passage. The problem is I have to go east to go offshore, and then I have to go through the, the barrier reef, which is much more complicated up north than it was down in Cairns. So we'll keep on keeping on uh, until we get to the end of Cape York how it goes. Hopefully not so many things are going to go wrong tomorrow. Hopefully we're a little bit better battle tested um, and ready to go. These are the most interesting sailors in the world in our round the world adventure.